Hi again. So this is going to be the summary of the sheriff study in 1966. So Tashwell came up with his social identity theory, which explains why people um, are prejudiced. Sheriff had a slightly different theory that was realistic conflict theory. He thought that you needed competition. So remember, Tashfell thought that the simple existence of a group, you being in one group, somebody else being in another, would cause problems. Whereas Sheriff didn't believe that. He thought there needed to be some competition. So Sheriff was interested in three things. How groups developed, where we get our group identity from, if and how conflict arose, and how then to reduce that friction. What is the use of even having this knowledge? So three key terms um, that we need for this study. Small group. So this is a group of individuals who share a common goal um, and it fosters some sort of interaction. It's very much an in-group from Tajfel um, and it normally has its own hierarchy or set of norms. A norm, remember, is the product of a group interaction and it's basically a set of behaviour that is expected or seen as normal. So British people have their norms. The psychology class that you're in will develop its own norms. Um, and so on. And finally, the group is a social unit with a number of individuals um, who have a set of norms which are self regulated. So these are the two aims of Sheriff. These are taken directly from the mark scheme, and an, mark scheme of an exam paper, each being worth two marks. So you wanted to test the idea in a field experiment that if you create an in group, out group, group situation, um, then create conflict between them, prejudice will arise. And he wanted to measure the positive and negative interactions between these two groups. He also wanted to see, or another way of looking at it, to see if prejudice would be reduced if the two groups were set a superordinate goal. So that means something that would work together on. If we give two groups that have problems a bigger goal to um, solve, would they cooperate and would that reduce the prejudice? So Sheriff got a sample of 22 11, 12 year old boys from middle class families in Oklahoma. So they're all American, mostly white, and they were all well-adjusted, sensible young men, as reported in the school and um, by the schools. And they were rated and matched by teachers. So as you can see in the bottom corner, those two are a perfect match for each other. So we talked about matched pairs, and that's what sort of design it was. So we gathered data in this by a number of methods. There was an observation, and um, so they were observed for 12 hours a day by participant observers. We we'll learn about those more in the term, but a participant ob observer is basically someone who takes part in the activities. So in this case, it was like a camp counsellor. And they did a sociometric analysis. So they measured friendship patterns, um, who talked to who, when they were, um, things like that. They did various experiments. So the boys had to collect beans and estimated how many each boy had collected. I'll say more on that in a minute. And they used tape recordings. So they analysed what was said by the boys about the people in their in-group and the out-group. This is a layout of the camp that they were at, at the Robbers Cave map. So um, importantly we've got the Rattler Cabin, one of the groups of boys called themselves the Rattlers, the others um, call themselves the Eagle, um, there's a water tank up here which comes into play later on and it just gives you a few of the kind of dimensions of the camp. Um, and this athletic field where they are going to compete later on. So the first phase of the study, um, Sheriff and his associates observed the formation of normal group structure. So they put all of the bunks together, um, all the kids together in bunks, and they were allowed to choose their own buddies, as that dog's doing there. Uh, after a few days, they separated the kids into two groups. They were very careful to break up the friendships which had formed. So you just went to camp and made a new best friend, and then a couple of days later, you were separated onto a different team. Um, the boys were unaware of why this was happening. They didn't know why they were being separated to avoid demand characteristics. We didn't want them guessing that we were trying to cause competition. So in that stage one, um, for five days, each group was given tasks to carry out, and they were only um, seeing each other. This was to help them bond. And they identified themselves as the eagles and the rattlers. This is known as the forming and setting norms stage. So in this stage, the two groups formed and they became they set their group norms of what is normal behavior and things like that. So they're given a range of activities from campouts to hikes during this five days. Um, 
And each group, again, part of those norms, developed its own jargon, in-jokes, secrets that they shared with each other, things like that. Um, and they maintain social control through ostracism um, and ridicule. So basically, there's 11-year-old kids, and they were mean to people who didn't fit in with them. Um, and again, then they picked the names of the Eagles and the Rattlers. So here's one of the mottos that they came up with. So then in stage two, um, we start to look at in, um, relationships between the two groups. Over the next four days, friction between the groups was encouraged by means of competition. Um, they were competing for various prizes like knives, which back in the day was a perfectly reasonable present to give an 11-year-old apparently. Um, just get a group of 11-year-old boys and give them some knives. It's like Sheriff has never seen Lord of the Flies. So in the second phase, the research introduced conflict through competition. So straight away the boys wanted to play baseball with each other. As soon as they found out they were allowed to mix, that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to compete to prove that they were better than the other group. Um, instead, researchers introduced the counting beans task. So they had to basically estimate the number of beans or count the number of beans um, in a given kind of tub. Um, and then they were asked to estimate how well they did and how well the out group did, the other group boys. So the result of this is the boys overestimated how well their group did and underestimated how well the other group did. Um, so they had various tournaments of competitions like this. Um, but soon the boys started calling each other names like a cheater, a stinker, a sneak or ghastly. Um, the boys refused contact with the opposing group. And they ignored their buddies, the people who they made friends with originally. And when they were asked to give ratings to the other boys in the camp, they gave them negative ratings. Um, they said that the sorry, the rattlers would um, say that the eagles weren't as good as them, and vice versa. Um, soon after, name calling, scuffles, and raids began. So they tried to steal each other's flags and set fire to it. And this sort of talk between them became commonplace. This competition between them really caused friction and prejudice amongst them. They'd taken people that they used to like and now they disliked them. So finally Sheriff tried to bring the groups back together. He wanted to see what sort of things would um, cure this sort of prejudice. So they set up a um, stage, this third stage, to reduce the prejudice amongst groups. The intergroup relations or integration phase. So they were brought together to watch some films together. Um, at first, there was still some friction. They sat in their own groups and didn't mix. And they made stupid little insults to each other, like insisting the other group went first because ladies go first. And um, they had seven such kind of film nights. Um, and then they were starting to be given a superordinate goal. A superordinate goal is just a goal that kind of supersedes or is more important than their group wants. So it's in this final phase um, that Sheriff had his hypothesis that working in common endeavours should promote harmony. And they did a few of these. So they tried to create some urgent natural situations that everyone needed to work together on. So there was three of these. So interrupting the water supply to the camp. So that water tank I showed you earlier. And um, they put two large boulders over the um, path of it. So no water was getting to the camp. And the boys had to work together to restore the system, to move the boulders out the way and get water flowing again. And they had another movie night where they said that they couldn't, um, they couldn't like give it for free, and they needed to pay for it. And all of the boys from both camps ended up chipping in a little bit of money to pay for it. Um, another one, they went on an outing somewhere, and they made it so that the camp truck broke down. Um, and they had the boys having to do a tug of, well, not a tug of war, but they had to pull the truck. So that they could give it a kind of a kickstart and get it started. Um, so they gave these superordinate goals. And this, it gives us kind of a happy ending. By the end of the camp, the boys were actively seeking opportunities to mingle and interact with each other. So by putting them together on the same team to do one task together, um, all of the kind of animosity and prejudice amongst them stopped. And the boys stopped giving each other negative ratings. Um, and in fact, they began more friends. So in the hostility phase, that second phase, 93% had friends in their own group. However, in the third stage, cooperation phase, 30% had friends between the groups. This shows that there was a reduction in prejudice from when they were competing to when they were um, working together. 
Um, so, um, sorry, Sheriff believes groups develop status hierarchies and group norms. Each group had a leadership structure. Um, when the groups met in competition, this causes prejudice. And um, people were likely to overestimate, much like Tashfell says, the abilities of the in group and put down the abilities of the out group. There's that social um, denigration and bigging themselves up that we see in the third stage of Tashfell. And working together for a common goal reduces tension. This is what a lot of people have suggested um, should be done in areas of high prejudice. Whether we're talking about Israel and Gaza, um, whether we are talking about um, black and white neighborhoods in inner city um, America during the 80s and like the LA riots and things. It's suggested that superordinate goals would be possible or is able to reduce prejudice. This is why a lot of kind of times when there's big football rivalries, people from the clubs might organize charity events. Um, if you are working together with somebody from the other club, if Sunderland and Newcastle are working together to raise money for charity um, or to do something good, then the prejudice will just fall away. Right, so that's the end of the slideshow. Um, we're going to do some more work on this in class um, and work to evaluate this study. Um, thanks very much and I'll see you then.